let's say we have we have engine in C++, like Unity Unreal Flex, and we have this scripting uh, backend, which is kind of black box for us. In Unity, it's a mono runtime for the C Sharp. In Flex, we have .NET that runs C Sharp. Uh, in Unreal, there is a blueprint system, a virtual machine that also runs the script, and it's, let's say, black box. Uh, so uh, in engines, generally, there is a, this black box engine, uh, the scripting engine has a feature uh, to invoke a code. Uh, let's say we have function of name update that's supposed to be called on every engine update, game update uh, loop. Um, and we, we can basically say that, hey, call, call me that method. I'm going to pass you some parameters like this one and this one and uh, pass them to the, to the scripting so uh, scripts can use it. Uh, and uh, other way, there is usually some way of binding. Um, the, the stuff from the engine as APIs into the scripting language, uh, whether it's done by the dynamic libraries, uh, which is a common uh, thing in, in, in computer systems, uh, or something different. But definitely, uh, there's a way to interact in that direction. So uh, scripting language can ask the engine by the simple APIs to provide some data. For example, when we call this update function, it might need some uh, time uh, differentiate uh, time information from the previous frame. For example, how much time it took to update uh, the previous uh, frame. And using this information, the scripting can decide how much to move, for example, the player object. Um, so those two ways of interaction are usually handed by the, some, uh, some uh, bindings generation code. Uh, and um, Usually, it's like one of the build system tools that build the engine, they compile it, auto generate some APIs uh, binding information. Uh, some people might be familiar from Unreal Engine. It's called uh, like uh, you macros, like you function, you property. Uh, you type those macros, and then when it's being compiled, the code, uh, they, the engine. Uh, com compiler basically extracts the inf information as a, a metadata of the of the script and generates the the binding code that helps to talk uh, those two interfaces uh, each other. Uh, we have something similar in Flux. Uh, it's our uh, own Flux build tool in C Sharp written, uh, and it basically uh, reads the engine uh, source code, engine headers uh, to to find the APIs and generates the C-sharp code automatically based on C++ code um, and links the, the interfaces together, like uh, implements proper uh, data conversion uh, because like there might be um, a different way of storing, uh, like let's say text on, on C++ and C-sharp. So we want to convert the, the text uh, from one format to another format, sometimes encoding, text encoding can change. So, uh, this is fully automated. Uh, that's one of the strong, strong features of Flux. Uh, in the past, it was uh, it was a little harder to, to to connect to scripting languages. Sometimes you had to write by hand a scripting API for C++ and C Sharp, and then write some automated uh, or semi-automated stuff to, that that connected to worlds. But now we're proud proud to have uh, the very automatic solution that basically reads C++ and outputs. Uh, bindings um, that connect those two uh, two things, uh, and uh, I, I mentioned the uh, the way of calling the scripting backend, where where you ask scripting, hey, give me the update function and call it right now, and that's basically how it works in most engines. Uh, in Unreal, when you update the uh, the tick function in Blueprint, it's under the hood. It basically call, calls find function by name and gets the function pointer and calls it uh, manually um, so, uh, in Flux. Okay, can I interrupt you? Uh, here, so you're saying that when you have a scripting part, like a scripting C-sharp uh, script program, and you compile it, you go to the, in Unreal, you go to the other source code, not the, not the running program, but the source code, right? and you read the file and you want to find the function with the given name and you also see the parameters that you need to supply so you need to do the conversion from your language like C sharp 
for example, you have a string, but underlying string implementation might be different than what is called string in the C++, and it is the case. So we need to convert this data into a proper data for the parameter, and then since you can call and find function by name, you extract where, what, is the what is the function, where is it located, so that you can call it from the C sharp part. And you, if you convert the properly the parameters, it will just work. And that's that's that would be the yes. case. Okay. Um, yes, in, in Unity and Android, uh, usually they, they use the find function um, way of yeah. uh, of gathering the, the function to call. And uh, it's being like um, the scripting backend knows that, uh, hey, I'm, I'm overriding the update function from the script interface. And the engine knows that it's script interface, it's got update function, so it's going to find it by the name. Uh, so it's kind of automatic, uh, except there is uh, there are always problem uh, with scripting uh, because you have to do, do this conversion. You have to find this function, and um, this layer in between can be very uh, very slow in some cases. For example, um, recently Godot engine started transitioning also to .NET from Mono project for C sharp scripting, and it turned out to be pretty uh, problem for them that this conversion layer in between was very slowly implemented uh, with lots of bad code. Uh, and people basically notice that when you have a game and try to um, recast for the physics 10, which, which is uh, check whether there is like collision with the another object uh, in a game code. And if you do a lot of those recasts, uh, the game is very slow. And um, they, they looked into the, the profiling tools and immediately saw that th this transition layer in between those two languages is very poorly written. And so that's that's a danger of the <laughs> of, of the of this thing. Uh, whereas in Flux Engine, um, we got our custom tool that generates very highly optimized code, and uh, we use the, uh, the the lots of like nice hacks in a in C++ language. Um, since we wanted to avoid this find function call, uh, that's very problematic, especially when there's a, a object with lots of functions. It's like uh, there's, let's say, uh, it's, it's fine for the script with one function, but if the game grows larger, as we uh, talked before, there can be script with 200 functions. So you don't want to find this function every time you iterate over the, uh, the scripts. And you also don't want to cache everything in some dictionaries, lookup tables, because it's also not so efficient to just look up by the name hash and get the, the function pointer. So instead, uh, we develop a custom hacky solution over the C++ language. Uh, because in C++, when you override the function uh, from the interface, um, there's a feature called uh, vtables, or virtual tables. And uh, basically, every object in the beginning has the pointer to the vtable. And vtable is basically a table of function pointers. Uh, so each slot accounts for one function. Um, and then compiler when, and generates the code to invoke the virtual function by looking the pointer of that method from the object uh, headers table. So that way, in C++, you can overwrite a method. and the C++ will call different code. It doesn't matter what object uh, comes in, uh, assuming it's a, the same interface. Uh, so we thought, yeah, that's the ideal solution for us for the scripting. We don't need to find function or something. It's the, the function pointer is already in the in the object header. It's it's there. It's the same cause as C++. So it's going to be fast as C++ to invoke the method uh, with very minimal uh, bindings layer. Uh, so that's how we started prototyping and. Um, I should have write some tech article about it because it's <laughs> it's pretty old feature to us. It's like two years or three years old in, in engine. And uh, what it does, uh, basically, uh, we do use this find function uh, when we initialize the script. For example, the binary of scripts is loaded. And we search uh, for all the scripts in the file. And we find, yeah, here's my script uh, from the game. It has update function. We got it. So we cache the pointer for it, and um, we we store that pointer in a vtable. Uh, 
basically there's like many in between small C++ method generated for, for that, uh, but it's being called uh, from C++ uh, directly. And to do this, uh, we basically clone the vtable memory with some slack uh, before and after, and uh, use some low level assembly code uh, hacks to find the index of that function in that vtable and swap the, the method pointer. Um, <laughs> surprisingly, because like the problem is it's undefined behavior. It's not defined in C++. Yeah. Uh, I know that you have um, you had a podcast episode with one of the C++ committee members, yeah. and if you ask him, he probably say that well, that's <laughs> that's illegal. not a language feature. <laughs> it's, it's illegal. illegal. Yeah, uh, it's it's not defined behavior in the language. It's uh, yeah. it's known feature of the of the compilers because that's the best way to implement the virtual function calls very common and it's the same they, they did for many years and for the two most com common c++ compilers which is uh, clunk compiler and microsoft uh, visual compiler uh, they work very similar but we, we've got to implement a different uh, different hacks <laughs> for each of them and test those hacks on all platforms but i can say that this code works on Windows, works on Xbox, works on PlayStation, on Linux, <laughs> on Mac, on iOS, on Android, on all platforms uh, we are supporting. And those hacks are working. We duplicate the tables, swap the pointers, and put them back into the, the object <laughs> header <laughs> when we create it. So there is a danger that if there will be a new version of the compiler, uh, this will stop working. Is that yes. right? Okay. Yes, exactly. Uh, that's very dangerous. And usually when there's like preview version of new compiler, new Clank or new Visual Studio, uh, we quickly download the, the beta version or <laughs> just check, hey, whether they broke it or not. <laughs> Are there, uh, is this the only hack that does this? Uh, like, is it the only hack of, of such a low levelness in the, in the engine? Yeah, because uh, uh, that's known fact that there is vtable in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but the problem is how to get the index of the function of the uh, that's in vtable because um, you don't you don't know what's in vtable. Uh, it's a just just black box. You know that there's like update function that's being overridden. It's somewhere in the vtable. It might be in the slot one, slot two, slot three, and so on. So we got to find it and to check it. We know that compiler generated assembly code to call that function. So we know that it put in the assembly code, the index of that function somewhere to move to the registers. So we read the assembly code uh, okay. to get that, that index on the Microsoft compiler. On Clank, it's a little different because if you ask Clank compiler to get the, the function pointer uh, of the member method, uh, such a on very overridden on update, it's going to return you just an index of that function. So okay. it's easier on that uh, compiler. Okay. okay, have you tried with GCC? Uh, no, actually okay. we don't support that compiler. I believe it might be something similar to Clank. I hope so. Uh, I know that <laughs> okay. there's also Intel compiler, but uh, we, we don't support those. Yeah, Intel compiler. I think it's, it's growing out of fashion in terms of C and C++. Okay, that's so cool. That's so cool. And just to, to mention, because you've mentioned this, but uh, vtables are the way of implementing inheritance in C++. So you're not exactly. supposed to ask vtable for function pointers or anything. No. It's for you to be able to create a new class that inherits from the first class and then swap the pointers if you have a new implementation overridden function. Yes, it's... and uh, when, when there's like C++ class uh, in engine API called script, it has public virtual methods of update. So um, there can be another C++ script in a game code that overrides it, or another one in a plugin or something like that. Uh, but when we create the object for C with C Sharp's class that has been overwritten, uh, that update function in C Sharp, uh, we basically, uh, when we create that object, we check if it's from that C sharp type. If it is, then we customize this vtable, basically duplicate it. So if we duplicate the vtable, there are already overrides of base class. Uh, like for example, plugin script can, can do something custom. And uh, then we swap that pointer, put it back to that object, and it lives uh, for the own time. And then when, when C sharp uh, is being called, uh, that goes over 
of this V table. It's a little hack here. We've got lots of crashes. A little, <laughs> a little. 